Good afternoon. I'd like to introduce the Associate Administrator of Space Flight from NASA Headquarters, Jess Moore. It is with deep, heartfelt sorrow that I address you here this afternoon. At 11.40 a.m. this morning, Space Program experienced a national tragedy with the explosion of the Space Shuttle Challenger approximately a minute and a half after launch from here at the Kennedy Space Center. I regret that I have to report that based on very preliminary searches of the ocean where the Challenger impacted this morning, these searches have not revealed any evidence that the crew of Challenger survived. The dedicated crew members of Challenger are Commander Francis Dick Scobie, Pilot Michael J. Smith, Mission Specialist Dr. Judy Resnick, Ellison Onizuka, and Dr. Ronald McNair. And payload specialists on board were Kristen McAuliffe and Greg Jarvis. All early indications in the Launch Control Center, the Kennedy Space Center, have indicated that the launch was normal up to approximately 11.40 a.m. this morning, about a minute or so into the flight. Flight controllers in the Launch Control Center here and in the Mission Control Center in Houston were polled immediately after the explosion, reported that they did not see anything unusual up to that point. The solid rocket booster recovery ships were immediately dispatched to the area approximately 18 or so miles downrange from Kennedy, along with various Coast Guard and military ships, helicopters, and planes. I have taken an immediate action to form an interim investigating board to implement early activities in this tragedy. Data from all of the shuttle instrumentation, photographs, launch pad systems, hardware, cargo, ground support systems, and even notes made by any member of the launch team and flight ops team are being impounded for study. A formal board will be established by the acting administrator very, very shortly. Subsequent reports on this strategy will be made by this formal review board. I am aware and have seen the media is showing footage of the launch today from the NASA Select System. We will not speculate as to the specific cause of the explosion based on that footage. It will take all the data, careful review of that data, before we can draw any conclusions on this national tragedy. Thank you. Mr. Moore has time for just a couple of questions from each center before returning to the effort uh, in investigating this tragedy. Uh, please wait for the microphone and, uh, and, if I, and give your name and uh, your affiliation. Uh, and we'll start uh, right here with Jacqueline Bolden from Channel 6. There were some reports that the shuttle perhaps rose a little slower than in, in previous launches, and, and there seemed to be a loud noise, and then the noise kind of backed off, and then a, a rush of noise again. Did you get any reports from anyone else that this seemed different from the people who either experienced it, you know, saw it here live? I have not heard any reports at all relative to that uh, effect that you just described. None whatsoever. Okay. Um, up, up here in the third row, Michael. Hello, my name's Kevin Hamilton from WGIR in Manchester. Uh, the entire teacher in space program was designed to introduce more people, specifically youngsters, to the space program. Uh, this obviously is not the introduction you intended to make. What do you think the effect, the uh, long-term impact that this is going to have on the youngsters that you were hoping to attract? Well, I think we'll have to address that as time goes on. And again, I think uh, today, uh, the events of the day uh, makes it much too early for me to speculate on the long-term impacts. OK, uh, Al uh, Selstead from uh, Baltimore's Sun in the first row. 
Mr. Moore, at this time, do you have any estimate of how much liquid fuel was in the external tank at the time of the explosion and how much explosive power, say in terms of TNT, that remaining liquid fuel might have been equal to? No, sir, not at this time. Uh, you realize what we've been doing uh, since uh, 1140 this morning is we immediately pulled our senior management together in this program, and I formed an interim board to ensure that all relevant data to this event uh, would be impounded and would be made accessible to the investigative people that will go and take a look at it. I can't answer your specific questions relative to how much fuel was on board at this point in time. The board, when it's formally reported by the uh, administrator, formally formed by the acting administrator, I'm sure will go into those kinds of questions, but I can't answer it right now. Okay, we're going to take one more question here before going to uh, the Johnson Space Center for questions. Uh, here in the uh, right opposite you, um, Jackie. Peter Van Sant from CBS News. We received a call today from a member of an academic group who said he was on a uh, tour group that was at the Pad 39B on Saturday night. This group was supposed to get off the bus to take a close look at the shuttle, but was not allowed to because this caller says they were told that a derrick arm had struck one of the tanks on the shuttle and that some repair work was being done. Are you aware of this incident and are you aware of of any problems at all with, with, any of the, with either the external tank or the two uh, solid rocket boosters? No, we looked at that uh, on uh, Saturday. There was, there was not even in the same area that, uh, uh, of the tank. It was a small box, a heater box, that uh, had about a quarter of an inch of the uh, insulation out of five inches that, were, that was scraped. It was a very minor scrape. It was repaired. And everybody, all the experts in the program took a look at that, and uh, so we closed it off at that point in time. Wait, wait for the microphone. I have to have the microphone. There was no damage to any tank, or this arm did not strike any tank as far as Not you know. to my knowledge. Okay, we're going to the uh, Johnson Space Center for questions. Uh, just a couple of questions. Yeah, this is the Johnson Space Center. We have a question from Paul Reeser, Associated Press. Yes, Mr. Moore. <clears throat> Was there... Uh, any debris of any description uh, recovered by the vessels, and if so, what was it? We, we do not have any detailed uh, debris reports at this point in time. That certainly is something that we're looking at, and we will be uh, impounding all the debris that uh, we recover, and we've set up plans here to store that debris so that uh, the investigating group can go in and look at that and assess that in great detail. I do not have any detailed reports right now on debris. Okay. Bruce Nichols. Mr. Moore, uh, with all the delays that you experienced last week, the delay again this week, was there any pressure building at all to try to get this one off the ground with the pressure up there? And, and who made the final decision to go or no go? There was absolutely no pressure to get uh, this particular launch off. Uh, we have always uh, <clears throat> maintained that flight safety is our top priority consideration in the program. And we look at the status and readiness of the systems based on that. Uh, we thoroughly reviewed the activities uh, over the weekend and yesterday and continually reviewed the uh, status of Challenger right up until launch this morning. Uh, all of the people involved in this program, to my knowledge, felt that Challenger was quite ready to go. And uh, I made the uh, decision, along with the recommendation from the team supporting me, that we launch. Uh, we're going to the Marshall Space Flight Center for a couple of questions. Martin Berkey with Huntsville Times. Uh, can you tell me what this does to the schedule on down the line, and including the launch at Vandenberg? No, I'm not prepared to do that. What I have done is basically suspend operations for a few days till we can sit down and assess this. And, uh, you know, we're obviously not going to pick up any flight activity until we fully understand... Uh, what the circumstances were relative to this morning's launch. So in the interim, near-term time, we basically suspended operations until we get a handle on uh, uh, what our problems were this morning. Nick Miller, WAFF Television in Huntsville. 
What part will Marshall Space Flight Center play in the investigation since the uh, propulsion system was the responsibility of the Space Flight Center here? Well, they obviously have to play a very strong role in the uh, uh, investigating uh, what happened this morning. As you know, the Space Shuttle program is built around a team effort, not only involving the Marshall Center, but also the Kennedy Space Center and uh, the Johnson Space Center. Uh, all of the elements have different responsibilities, and clearly Marshall has the propulsive responsibilities on the shuttle. They will play a very dominant role, as will the other three centers I mentioned, as well as uh, any, anybody that uh, is contributing to the overall program and has some relevant information uh, to add will certainly play a part. Okay, we're moving to uh, Washington uh, for questions from NASA headquarters. Uh, okay, there is a problem with our uh, audio circuits to Washington. Uh, we are going to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. Bill Hines of the Chicago Sun-Times. Mr. Moore, in your opening remarks, you mentioned the appointment of this interim review board and said that it would be making uh, uh, statements from time to time. Uh, not to put any adverse interpretations on this, it sounds a little bit like a news blackout, and I'm wondering if your objective is to consolidate information, what will be the point of issue of all those announcements in the future? And are other people not involved in that review board forbidden to talk? Well, let me, let me correct uh, your statement. First of all, I said that I had appointed an interim review board. That interim review board is, co is composed of the senior members of the NASA team here to take immediate actions on impounding data. The acting administrator is expected to appoint a formal review board very shortly, and it will be left up to that review board in order to determine its uh, progress reports in terms of their findings. What we have done here today is to move very quickly so that all relevant data could be impounded and all actions that are needed to be taken in order to preserve as much information as we can on the circumstances of this morning can be preserved. And that's the nature of the work that I've implemented today, and I expect a formal board to be established uh, very, very shortly, within the next day or so, by the acting administrator. Uh, this is Roy Neal, NBC News. Jeff, you've said, I believe, that future flights are temporarily frozen. The United States space program, as a result, is at a halt. Now, based on your experience, how long would you estimate that this investigation will take? Six months, a year, before you get back in business? Roy, it is, as, as you know, it is very difficult to uh, uh, estimate that time. Uh, it's going to be a function of uh, uh, what the board finds uh, were the difficulties today and what corrective actions have to be taken before we feel confident and uh, feel safe to uh, fly again. And I clearly am not in a position to speculate today uh, the length of time involved in making that determination. It will be done just as quickly as we possibly can, but also as prudently as we possibly can and as thoroughly as we possibly can. One more question from JPL. Uh, Bill Hines, again, I've got to follow up on that first question of mine. I understand now that there will be announcements made after the permanent board is appointed. Is that correct? There will be an announcement, I'm sure, of the members of the permanent board, yes. I believe that will be correct, and then I think that board uh, will determine uh, uh, its rate of reporting based on the progress of its findings. Okay, we're, go we're going next to, to the Washington um, NASA headquarters. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, we didn't read that question. Uh, and while they're repairing that circuit to Washington, we'll go to the Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland. Uh, Mark Weaver, WBAL Radio in Baltimore. Has this raised any questions about how uh, reliable the space shuttle is? Might there just be too many things that could go wrong with a vessel this complicated? Well, that question, I'm sure, will be uh, asked, and uh, I don't want to speculate on that at this point in time. That's certainly a logical question for somebody to ask. Ken Cheryl from WDVM in Washington. Were there any unusual weather conditions aloft or any unusual weather conditions during the launch? Eddie, 
somebody None that uh, we that observed that I recall. We did uh, uh, put up some weather balloons earlier this morning. We did look at uh, load conditions as we normally do, and the winds aloft uh, looked good. We didn't have any uh, exceedances as far as our load indicators are concerned, to my knowledge, and uh, we thought everything was in uh, good shape for a launch this morning. Uh, Mr. Moore, I.J. Hudson from WRC-TV. Uh, has it become a problem that you have been too good in the past that the American people have seen flawlessly uh, perform missions on TV uh, almost routinely, and that something like this happens all of a sudden it hits home even harder? Well, I don't, I don't know how to answer your uh, question uh, specifically. We always strive in every flight that we uh, perform to be as reliable and as safe as we possibly can and to do everything that we can to ensure that the vehicle and the systems are all ready to fly. Flight safety is our number one uh, priority in the uh, space shuttle program. And certainly when you see an event like uh, this this morning, we are going to have to do uh, uh, a very detailed assessment of the set of circumstances to try to understand uh, what occurred, and we will then in turn assess the impacts from that to determine where we go in the future. Okay, back here at the Kennedy Space Center, uh, we only have time for a couple more questions. Jay Barbary from NBC News in the front row here. Jess, uh, I would like to know if you know what happened to Challenger. Can we assume that it was consumed in the explosion? And can you tell us specifically what you know now that the recovery crew has recovered in the impact area? I have not gotten a briefing, Jay, on what's what the recovery team has uh, found at this point in time. And I have basically uh, looked at the uh, NASA select photos and so forth that you did. And all I can say is that it appeared from those photos that there was an explosion. And that's about all I can say at this point in time. OK, we have time for only one more question. And James Fisher from the Orlando Sentinel has had his hand up a uh, long time. Jess, uh, I realize this is a rather forward thinking question, but, but what is the situation with uh, the Rockwell plant about uh, the possibility for uh, ordering another shuttle. Has the assembly line been shut down? What's, what's the situation with that? Well, uh, as, as uh, we've discussed in the past, uh, we are manufacturing structural spares for an orbital system, and that manufacturing process is continuing. We are also buying spares for the, for the uh, current fleet that we have, and there is a production capability there if and when it's decided that that's the next step we want to do is to move forward and do that. So I think the bottom line answer to your question is yes, that is a possibility, that we could implement a production capability for another orbiter if that were decided to be the thing to do. Okay, I'm uh, sorry to have to wind this up now. Mr. Moore has to get back immediately. Uh, as you know, he's been here since very early in the morning, and there's much to be done. Thank you all.